How's it going everyone? Vlad here with solosplc.com and today we're going to be revisiting a concept we talked about in a different video which was based on sequencers and based on popular demand I wanted to revisit that concept and discuss a way that you can create sequencers in a much more streamlined way in RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000 in Ladder Logic and therefore illustrating one of the key concepts that I typically ask engineers on a technical interview which is to show me how they can implement a very very simple sequencer using some timer instructions, some move instructions, some XICs, XIOs, and ultimately get you to test your knowledge of PLC programming. All right, so we are connected to our PLC, which is a compact Logix sitting behind me in the video. What I'm going to do is under tutorials, I'm going to have a routine called main. So I'm going to create a separate one that we can access and use for the sequencers. So right click tutorials, select add and then new routine. We're going to give this a name of underscore zero two just to keep it conventional under the main sequencers and press on OK. Now, we need to add a jump subroutine from our main in order to execute the sequencers. So I'm going to double click main first and foremost, and then add any instruction. What I typically do is I double click and then change that to a JSR or jump to subroutine. Here, I'm going to indicate the name. So underscore zero two, press on enter once it auto completes. And if it asks for any input parameters, I can press escape, double click, press escape, double click, press escape. And so that should be all we need on the main side. So I can select the wrong, accept all changes, press on yes. Okay, so now we can go into sequencers and start adding some logic. So a sequencer is nothing more but a array of different steps that the system can take in order to execute properly. So at the beginning, I'm going to have some kind of a start and stop routine, just like we've done in many other cases. And here I'm going to create a start button, a stop condition, as well as a latch. Once again, as I've shown you many times for a motor command. And so here I'm going to call this sequence underscore start. This is going to be sequence stop sequence underscore running and I'm going to copy the sequence running underneath here and change this OT to an XIC instruction so right click new sequence start these are going to be all booleans underneath tutorials so create right click create and sequence running click on create we're going to commit those changes and once again just to demonstrate Something in a real world is going to start our sequence, something is going to stop the sequence, and once it is running, it's going to keep track of the condition. So I can right click this and then toggle bit, or once again, control T for the shortcut. The sequence is now running. We can release this button and it's going to remain running until it is stopped. Right click, toggle bit, it is now stopped. Right click to release that push button. Nothing too complicated. Once the sequence start to run, we need to create the conditions or the steps through which it's going to go. So if the condition is running, we're going to do a one shot. So this is going to be a one shot instruction. Once again, there's going to be several ways to do this. I'm just going to create an array. So sequence S is zero. So I'm creating an array of booleans. So I'm going to right click, right click this in case I need multiple one shots. So 64 underneath tutorials. So once it starts running, I want to move a step number one. So I'm going to add this instruction. So I'm going to move one into my sequence, sequence current, or actually I'm going to name that step current, right click this. This is going to be a double integer underneath tutorials. So once the sequence starts running, it's going to put in a one. And what I also want to do is I'm going to add a rung, which tells me that if the sequence, so we can pause the sequence. Once we get to the end, we're going to reset this back to zero. So at this point, the sequence is in step one. So I can have a step one condition, which is going to essentially check. So equals 
If the current step is equal to one, we're going to execute a certain condition. In my case, since I'm simulating a sequence, what I'm going to do is introduce different timers for the amount of time that the sequence should be running. So this is going to be a T on instruction, and this is going to be sequence step timer. And this is going to be zero. Actually, let's make it one just to make it a little less confusing. We're going to lose one of the timers in the array. So right click, new timer, and we're going to have 20 timers, although we're not going to use all of them, but we're going to click on create. And so the preset of our timer is going to dictate how long this step should execute. So I'm going to put in 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds, and that should be all that is needed. Now, of course, inside of this rung, so in the next rung, rung number three, I could have a certain condition. So this could be, for example, filling in a certain ing ingredient into a tank. This could be cooking my food or liquid for a certain amount of time. This could be mixing, so on and so forth, just like we've talked in many batching tutorials and as an example. Once this timer is complete, so what I need to check for is a complete bit. So that's going to be timer.done. And once it is done, we need to move to the next step. So once again, I can use a one shot instruction to move on to the next step. So that's going to be step number one. And I do need to make sure that I'm moving step number two. And then I can very easily copy paste these rungs. So now the step current is equal to two. Now this is going to be using timer number two. And let's say the step is going to take 15 seconds to complete, and that's going to be step number two. And of course, it's important to notice that we can very easily duplicate as many timers as we need and as many steps as we need. So I can put in another rung underneath. So this is going to be step number three. So sequence two is done. And then here we're going to have a step number three is done. And we can say that once a certain step is done, we're going to call our routine that is finished. So what I'm going to do right here after the step number three, instead of moving step number four, I'm going to latch in this condition. So again, you shouldn't typically use latches and unlatches, but there's going to be an acknowledgement. And actually, we can do this without using a latch and unlatch. So this is going to be a condition that we create. So this is going to be sequence complete. And once the sequence is complete, it's going to require some kind of an acknowledgement from the operator. Again, this could be automated when, for example, this tank that has been filled moves on or the tank is completely filled and the next process starts. So this is going to be, in my case, a HMI push button. So this is sequence acknowledge. Sequence acknowledge. This is going to be a Boolean. Sequence complete, also a Boolean. We're going to click on create. And once the sequence is acknowledged and is complete, we need to go back to step number zero. So in case it is complete and it gets acknowledged, we can create another rung here. And so instead of this implementation, what we need to do is we need to create a different rung that's going to check for complete and allow us to press on acknowledge. So complete, acknowledge, and then this is going to reset or move zero into our step. So it's going to be zero and then into the current step. I'm going to delete this and let's compile this entire program and see what we've got. Now let's go through the steps of this logic. So I'm going to toggle the sequence start bit and then I'm going to toggle that off. You'll notice that the running is going to enable and my timer is going to begin to count for the first step. So that's going to count up to 10 seconds. We're going to get into step number two. At the end of 15 seconds, we're going to move on to step number three. So notice that you can use the logic to actuate any valves, any timers, any lights that you might have on your factory floor. 
in step number three we're counting to 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds and then we're going to indicate that the sequence has been completed and that's going to wait for the sequence acknowledge bit in order to go back to normal so i'm going to toggle that bit toggle it back off just like you would have from a normal push button scroll all the way up and we'll notice that the sequence is ready to start once again we can add an indicator that says that the sequence is ready to start when it is equal to sequence step current zero now and so from an interview standpoint one of the follow-up questions i might ask is as an example if you want to change the length of your steps how would you go about setting up that logic and how would you allow the operator to do that and one of the answers would be to write to this sequence step timer preset value and one of the i guess the correct ways of doing this is creating a separate variable that's going to write into that timer so what you can do here if you edit this wrong what i would expect an advanced engineer or candidate doing is creating this kind of a move instruction so i'm going to add that underneath so this is going to be moving from sequence for example step set point one and that's going to move that into sequence step timer one dot preset so just like so and this is going to be a new array of presets so double integer let's say to like 100 click on create and what this illustrates to me is that the engineer is thinking a little bit beyond just this basic logic implementation and they're creating an endpoint that then allows me to put this 10,000 set point on an HMI somewhere that then can be modified in a different application. And of course, there are ways to modify this directly through an HMI, but that's going to be very unapparent to someone who's going through that program whereas a set point is going to explicitly illustrate and then allow you to not only just put it there but also to right click and add a description so you'll notice there's going to be this edit main operand description so i can right click this and say set point for first sequence step in milliseconds and then i press enter or i just get out of that description and you'll notice that this allows me to very easily add a description and then respond to this set point from an hmi or any other system now i'm also going to be asking questions well what is a drawback of doing it this way well the problem is is if you want to add a step after your for example if you have a lot of logic this step number one for example mixes the product step number two is going to be designed and tied to a bunch of valves to for example cook the product and step number three is going to dispense the product well when you're working with this type of a sequence it's difficult to add intermediary steps so that could be one of the discussion points that you have with your interviewer and you show them that the logic in this case moves from one to two so if all the steps are pre-programmed as an example, in a real world system from steps one to 20, then ins inserting step number seven is going to be a little more complex than one would expect. So th there's no easy way to add step number uh, two, for example, that's going to come in between step number one and st step number two in the current system. You don't have to rewrite and then move some steps down in order to accommodate that logic. And a workaround could be instead of moving in an increments of one, in the system that you're designing at the beginning you could move in steps of 10 for example so instead of going from one to two and then to three you could move in 10 and that way you could insert another step in between it should your system change as an example now the last point also is if you're troubleshooting this so if you're working on a system like this it also becomes a little bit more difficult to see what's going on so it could be a question of well how would you figure out that step number two is the problem and one of the things that i would refer to you is one of the previous videos we did on how to capture certain data so here you could say i'm going to add a logic rung that when step number two executes so when my sequencer is equal to two so i'm going to change that from move to equal so equal to let's see here I just i like to have that on the bottom i'm going to create some kind of a count up instruction so ctu and this is going to be 
Again, it doesn't have to have any particular name. Sequence trouble. New sequence trouble. This is going to be a counter tutorials. Create on OK. Preset zero. Zero. And this could be one way to kind of um, figure out how many times step number two has triggered. And obviously you can use some techniques to figure out what's triggering when step number two is called. So go. Um, and use this as a starting point. In any case, that's all we have for sequencers. I really believe that you should be able to understand this as a beginner to intermediate level PLC programmer. And this is something that you're going to encounter very frequently in plants that do not use the sequence or the SQI and SQL instructions that we've illustrated in a separate video.